Good morning, it's Reverend Mike Capron here on the second week of Easter, April 19th. Um, it's, uh, we're doing our worship by conference call with COVID-19. I'm going to read the Bible text and preach for those who uh, couldn't make it to that. John 20, 11 through 29. And Mary stood outside the tomb crying, Jesus' tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look in and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord! But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house again and Jesus, or Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas told him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. Well, welcome to Sunday number five of Stay at Home, Don't Go to Church or most anywhere else. Who could have imagined all this way back in February? It is quite a change from what we were used to, right? Change is the topic for today because it fits where we are as well as where Jesus' followers were in John 20. Let me mention two kinds of change. The first is called continuous change. It is continuous because despite the change, your life basically continues as it has in the past. You wake up and your car doesn't start. Your child has a cold. You move to a different apartment in the same town. You make an intentional job change within the same profession. These things are all changes, but they are small changes within a more or less continuous flow of your normal life. You manage them and then things go back to normal. Back in the middle of March, when we decided to spend our in-person worship for Two weeks, um, just two weeks, mind you. Uh, perhaps at that time, some of us thought we were experiencing continuous change. Now on April 19th, we are probably getting the idea that that may not be the case. We may actually be experiencing discontinuous change. Discontinuous change is when something happens that you sense will change your life in some major ways. The birth of your first child, the doctor telling you that you have end-stage cancer, being laid off from your job unexpectedly. These are changes that you won't be over and done with in a couple of weeks. They presage radical changes in your way of life. They are a kind of death, 
the death of an old life, which, God willing, will eventually lead to a new kind of life. For the disciples, it was all about what had happened to their teacher, their master, their friend, Jesus. They had left homes and professions and family back in Galilee to follow him. And now he was dead, executed by the temple authorities and their Roman allies. They had based their whole lives around him, and now he was dead. That is discontinuous change. Mary was trying to handle it, trying to keep it together, trying to do the right thing. She got the spices together to do what was right for Jesus' body, got up before dawn, and went to the garden. The tomb was empty. She ran all the way back to tell, told the others. Peter and John ran there, exchanged a few words, and ran off, leaving her breathing heavily from all the exertion and the stress. It seemed like she could do nothing but sob at that moment. My wife and I have both had moments a little like that in the past week. We weren't sobbing, but all of a sudden it would just kind of hit us. This COVID thing is big, really big. And it isn't continuous change, it is discontinuous. Things are not going back to normal on May 1st. Eventually there will be a vaccine, but it isn't going to be in 2020. We will not be going out for dinner in a movie in the month of May. Now back to Mary. There she is, sobbing, overwhelmed by the enormity of it all. Wasn't it bad enough that Jesus was killed? Did they have to steal his body as well? Shaking her head in frustration, she glanced into the tomb again and pulled up short. That's a double take. Who were those two in white? And what did they just say? As she turns around and sees the gardener. She, she tries to focus on the immediate problem. Sir, if you've carried the body away, tell me where you've put him and we'll go get him. Mary. He said her name. He knew her. And now suddenly she knew him. This enormous sense of relief floods over her. It wasn't discontinuous change. Everything was going to go back to normal. There would be all these things that were horrible, these shocks. They would just go away and things would be the way they used to be. No, says Jesus, they won't. Don't hold on to me in those times. You can't. It won't work. Something new is happening. I am ascending to the Father, to my God and to your God. Go and tell the others. Well, she goes and does exactly that. John doesn't mention it, but Luke's gospel says that they didn't believe her. Why? Probably denial. The human capacity for denial is pretty huge. I don't know if they were in that grief stage where they were in denial about Jesus' death or if they were just kind of denying her crazy news or both. It doesn't matter. Don't argue with people who are in denial. Just let them be. When the time is right, they will snap out of it, like when the risen Christ appears among them and shows them his wounds. Jesus does not leave us alone in our despair. He comes to us. He reminds us that he is like us. He is a human who can be both wounded and killed and experience stress. But he is also divine, like unto God. He is both. And he can give us a kind of a comfort that no one else can. He offers us his peace, peace even in the midst of turmoil. And it isn't just for us. His peace is contagious. Well, like COVID-19, we can share that with others, even if we're six feet apart. We can offer them forgiveness. We can be agents of God's grace, ambassadors of love. Some people will have a hard time accepting that. Which brings us, of course, to Thomas. Thomas was away when Jesus came that first Easter. Maybe he had had enough of being cooped up with all the others. Maybe he needed to be alone. Maybe he had a girlfriend. Who knows? But when he returned, they all started excitedly telling him that they had seen Jesus, that Jesus was alive, that Jesus had blessed them. What? No, he isn't here now, but he was here before. Really? <laughs> well, Thomas would have none of it. Thomas is angry. Anger is another one of those normal reactions people have when they are under stress and suffering discontinuous change. I watched some videos of some of the protests against stay-at-home orders around the country. 
Some of the people looked angry, like the ones in Texas. Others were calmer. Uh, but by the way, in none of the clips did I see good social distancing of at least six feet, which makes me nervous. Now, Thomas, in his anger, said this. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, I'm pretty sure that next week was an interesting one. They probably had to stay inside for fear of arrest, but Thomas was seething and the others were giddy with incomprehensible happiness. Finally, the following Sunday, Jesus shows up again offering to let Thomas put his hands inside Jesus' wounds. And Thomas surrenders. He understands that the situation is bigger than just him, bigger than he can comprehend. He arrives at a place of acceptance about what cannot be changed. Perhaps it is easier for him than for us because his situation turns from sadness to gladness. He understands the power and the love of God in new ways. He develops a faith in it. But discontinuous change is always hard. I'm sure some of you have experienced discontinuous change in your life where normalcy is thrown out the window. We would, you know, in our worship, we had a little time of sharing where I asked people about that. I, I would suggest that maybe this week you have a little conversation with some people and ask them about significant not continuous changes they've had and how they handled it. Maybe you'll, we can help each other with some good advice. But for now, in closing, let me just remind you how much God loves you. Like Mary, we all may have moments of panic. It's okay. Breathe deeply. Look around. Jesus and a couple of angels are right there with you. Like the disciples, we may feel despondent and worried. It's okay. Call somebody. Hey, call me. Try to connect with some other people. Someone may have some heartening news to share. And Jesus might just show up out of the blue, offering you peace. Like Thomas, you may feel angry. Everyone and everything seems so crazy. You just can't believe what people are doing out there. It's okay. Jesus will provide you with exactly what you need. And your people will help. Don't suffer from unfaith. Have faith. Here are the last two verses of this chapter. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. I wish you the best for myself and the First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood Park. May you have life in Jesus' name. May things go all right for you this week. Amen.